Hi, hello and welcome to another video by the scientist formerly known as Nijeli. In today's video I would like to show you how to make these twin bell alarm clocks from soda cans. To give you an idea from what it's made of, uh, I take one apart. So I first unscrew here the twin bell. So you can see that uh, the main structure is just an ordinary soda can where a DIY quartz clock module was integrated. As main components I used these two type of soda cans, one with 67 mm in diameter and one with 53. Other things you need are a battery case holder and water-based inkjet transfer paper to make the clock face. Searching the internet you basically find two types of DIY quartz clock modules one with an alarm function and the other one with just showing time. As you can see none of the two models fit into the bigger soda can directly so we have to take them apart. After comparing the two models I found that only the alarm clock uh, can be modified to fit the soda can. This video about the twin bell alarm clock from soda cans is organized in a way that I first show you how to make the main structure. Then we come to the preparation of the twin bells. And furthermore I give some explanations how to make the clock face with inkjet transfer paper. Additionally I will show you how to modify the quartz clock module by gluing the buzzer onto the outside of the module and then how to add the external battery box. The support box has to be glued onto the quartz clock module so it fits into the main structure. And in the last chapter all components are combined to create the final product. And if you like what you see so far, please stay tuned, check out all my other videos, share, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Ok, let's get started with a chapter how to make the main clock structure. With sharp exacto knife make a strong groove into the lid of the soda can. With the help of a can opener you detach the lid from the soda can. This does not always work perfectly, so you have to take the rest out with pliers. Then you cut the soda can in half. Now comes the process how to remove the ink from the soda cans. I already posted a detailed procedure how to remove ink from soda cans with a pressure cooker. Just follow the link in the upper right corner to see how it is done. After 20 minutes within the pressure cooker, uh, you can open up the pressure cooker, pay attention, the vapor is very hot. And then you can start to remove the ink with nail polish remover, acetone or another solvent. Use steel wool for residues that are hard to remove. The soda can then is shortened to 67 mm with scissors. Then we punch some holes into the main structure to put the screws in. The distance from the front side is 2.5 cm for the screws that are used for the legs. 5.5 cm are used as a distance between the two legs. Now the same procedure is repeated for the screws that are used to fix the bells. The dimensions used here are given on the post-it in the video. And this was already everything about the main structure. 
The next step covers how to make the twin bells. For the twin bells we need uh, two smaller uh, soda cans. As you can see the soda can on the right side already have the ink removed. Now you can see that the round dome is made from the bottom of the soda can. The lower part of the twin bells below the dome is made from the lid of the soda can. I made a jig to cut the soda can on the right height. You see it's this piece of plywood with 1.4 cm in height. Place the jig near the soda can and then put your exacto knife on top to make the groove and then rotate the can around. With the help of your fingernails you can separate the lid from the rest of the soda can body. In order to cut the dome out of the bottom we need to separate the bottom from the rest of the soda can. You can use the same chick to separate it. With your exacto knife make a strong groove inside the bottom. Bend the outside of the soda can bottom with pliers and you will find that the soda can will break there where you made the groove. With scissors trim the dome to form a nice round shape. Make a hole in the middle of the lid. Enlarge the hole so you can put the screw inside. Then place the dome in the middle of the uh, lid and fix it with glue. Through the hole you already made in the lid, you now make also a hole into the dome and then you enlarge it again so the screw goes through the entire twin bell. How to make the clock face is the next step. From the internet I downloaded various clock face designs. In the description of the video you will find a link to download the file. The clock faces then are printed to a inkjet transfer paper. The transfer paper I used is also given in the description of the video. The design on the transfer paper has to be fixed with a clear lacquer spray. Wait until it has dried completely. The surface for the clock face is cut out of flattened soda can. I already posted a video how to do this, just follow the link in the upper right corner. The outer diameter of the clock face is 6.4 cm. The inner diameter is 0.7 cm. It's quite hard to cut out a hole with such a small diameter. To facilitate cutting later on with scissors, just punch around the circle with a knife. Then cut out your design you want to transfer to the aluminum clock face. Place the transfer paper in a water bath and then uh, as soon as the paper starts to separate you transfer the upper part with the clock face design to the aluminum sheet. Then carefully take out the clock face out of the water bath and remove excessive water with the tissue. The reshaping of the quartz clock model is the next step so it will fit into our soda can. Remove all clock hands from the quartz clock module and then the two black knobs on the reverse side. Lift the four taps 
around the uh, frame and then carefully open up the reverse side. Carefully lift the gears from the clockwork. Now we can reshape the size of the frame to fit the soda can. This is done by removing the four edges like indicated in the picture. Removal of the edges is easier if you first remove the buzzer shown in the upper circle. The lower circle is indicating where to add additional wire for the external battery box. The buzzer is removed by cutting the two wires uh, with scissors. Then bend the battery contact to the side so you can start with a Dremel cutting off the edges. The side wall of the battery box is also removed. Make also a hole into the battery box so the wires can be put through later on. In order to solder on the wires for our external battery box, we have to remove all the other part and deliberate the blue part where the quartz is mounted on. Solder on the two wires for the external battery box. Now comes the delicate part to uh, put everything back in place. Clip on the reverse side. Remove the excessive edges from the reverse side. With a soldering iron, solder the bother to the corresponding wires. And do the same with the battery box. Thereafter secure the connections with shrink tubing. With a hot glue gun, the wires are bent back so the module later on fits into the soda can. How to make the support box for the quartz module is the next step. Cut out a uh, circle from Depron in the same size as the clock face. It should fit smoothly into the main structure. Then take a pen and mark the positions for the screws. Take the prepared clock face and hold it in front of the quartz clock module. Then measure the distance between the end of the battery box until the clock face radius. Here it was about 2.1 cm and uh, this was then cut away from the initially prepared Depron circle. Cut off also the openings for the screws. These Depron segments are kneaded twice. Then mark the size of the battery box on two one of the segments. Transfer the dimensions of the battery box also to the second segment. Prepare two pieces of Depron with 4.5 cm in length 
as a distance holder between the two segments. With a hot glue gun, uh, fix those two pieces between the two segments. I used a low melting glue gun here in order not to melt the Depron. As reinforcement, add another two pieces uh, to the side of this supporting box. There is no space left for the battery box cables coming out of the quartz block module so you have to cut some uh, openings into the supporting box. Close the bottom of the support box with another piece of Depron. On one end of the supporting structure cut out uh, some space for the battery box. Then glue the supportive structure to the quartz clock module. Here you see how to enter the battery box. Finally we come to the end of the project where we combine all the components we have prepared so far. Fix the clock face to the front side with double sided adhesive tape. Then fix again the clock hands to the quartz clock module. Adjust the hour hand and the minute hand by testing if you hear the alarm at the correct time. Put the regular screws through the holes you have prepared in the main structure and take countersunk screws for the twin bells. Add the twin bells and fix them with the countersunk head screws. Sometimes the twin bells are not so near to each other as they should be, so make two holes into the uh, twin bells and then uh, fix them with a nylon thread. And here you see like the entire structure look like before adding the quartz clock module. This component is added at the end and now you're through. Enjoy your twin bell clock made from soda cans. <laughs>